A rail strike that could cripple the U.S. economy is once again a possibility after a second union voted down the proposed contract. And the strike could happen as soon as next month unless all 12 rail unions vote in favor or Congress steps in. Here to talk a little bit more about this in the labor market at large, we want to bring in Tom Perez, American Bridge 21st Century Co-Chair and former Labor Secretary under President Obama. Secretary, it's great to see you. So let's start with the rail strike because that's really front and center today. Clearly, stakes are very high right now. The possible strike coming at a time when the economy is already slowing. It seems like a pretty attractive possible agreement here. 24 percent wage hike, yet that doesn't seem to be enough. I guess from your position as former Labor Secretary, what do you think needs to happen in order for these two sides to reach an agreement? I think they'll get there. And, uh, you know, for by way of history, uh, I remember when the West Coast ports in 2015 were on the verge of strike and uh, President Obama dispatched me out there. And there were a lot of predictions of gloom and doom. And and we were able to reach an agreement. And when you have so many different uh, unions involved, it's always a challenging process, but I, I have confidence that they'll get through because there's a real win-win opportunity, really win-win-win, win for the workers, win for business, and win for consumers. And I think there's an acute appreciation that uh, we cannot afford a work stoppage right now. And so I think they will get there. And I, again, I've been involved in these dynamics and uh, it's always darkest before the dawn. And I think they'll get there. Indeed. And you mentioned the dock workers. They are currently working without a deal. A strike is possible there as well. And Amazon is trying to unionize and Starbucks is trying to unionize. Is this just the tip of the iceberg and a result of this tight labor market? Well, workers have leverage and I think that's good. And, and they're using that leverage. And you see a lot more activity in uh, unionization, whether it's at Starbucks stores or uh, Amazon facilities, I think that's a good thing. And I think you will continue to see workers flex muscle. And I, you look at the public opinion data, the public opinion of labor unions is at its highest mark in decades. People understand that unions help bring us the weekend and unions have helped bring us shared prosperity. And so you're going to continue to see this across the country. I, I think it's a good development. And I think uh, unions, management, business, Consumers can all succeed together. And that's what we have to do. Make sure that workers who are toiling every single day get their fair share of the pie. Speaking of workers, the labor market, I want to bring up a letter that Senator Sherrod Brown recently sent to Fed Chair Jay Powell. He sent it earlier this week, coming ahead of the Fed's meeting next week. And in that letter, he wrote, for working Americans who already feel the crush of inflation, job losses will make it much worse. We can't risk the livelihoods of millions of Americans who can't afford it. So, of course, this brings front and center the debate about what the Fed should be doing. Are they at risk of overshooting? I guess now, do you think it's time for the Fed to pause or what do you think the Fed should be doing at the next meeting? Right. I, I, I hope they don't overcompensate. And, and when people ask about inflation, inflation is real. I, I feel it. You feel it. Um, at the same time, remember where we were. I remember when I was labor secretary and what we saw in 2009 was the stimulus bill wasn't enough. And when I got to the Labor Department, we had millions of long-term unemployed folks, many of whom are 50 and above, uh, less than a college degree, who'd been out of work for a year and a half. And you know what? They were in big trouble. We didn't have to deal with this this time because we had a robust stimulus plan. Did it you know, contribute to some of the inflation? Possibly. But I will tell you, I lost a lot of sleep over the millions of Americans who had lost their job for a year, two years, and frankly, were hard pressed to get it back. We don't have that problem. We don't want to create that problem by overcompensating. So I hope the Fed will take that into account in their next meeting. But Mr. Secretary, Democrats were fiercely critical of President Trump for criticizing the Fed when he would raise rates. Why is it OK for Sherrod Brown and John Hickenlooper to do the same thing? Well, I think they're simply uh, addressing a concern that a lot of people have right now, which is that uh, if if the Fed takes action, which results in a recession, people are going to lose their jobs. But, but and so doesn't that jeopardize the independence think, of the Fed? No, the Fed is going to do what the Fed does, but the Fed doesn't operate in a vacuum. And, and you know, I, I look at Senator Brown's uh, letter as simply 
a, a plea for them as they make decisions that they're going to be making to understand the doctrine of unintended consequences. I don't, I don't see that as exercising undue influence. He's not saying, if you do this, we are going to do X. He's just saying, please remember, please look at history. Please don't overcompensate. Yeah, and I think it is raising some eyebrows, obviously, given the time of it, the fact that we're, we are only two weeks, less than two weeks, until the midterm. So speaking of midterm, Secretary, I want to get your thoughts just on the messaging that we've heard from the White House, because today, pivoting once again, focusing on the economy. And over the last several months, I think the feeling out there is that the messaging from the White House has been very mixed. I guess, first off, what do you think the messaging should be or needs to be over the next two weeks? We have your back. Uh, you know, we we climbed out of this pandemic. We had the we've created 10 million jobs under Joe Biden. We had the quickest recovery from the pandemic uh, in U.S. history. We we see manufacturing uh, moving at a wonderful clip. Uh, you know, look at the investment in the the Chips Act. A uh, company in New York announcing a multi-billion-dollar investment. We're bringing down the cost of prescription drugs. We are working on the issues that matter most to you. And we are protecting a woman's right to choose. These are the pocketbook issues. These are the issues that people are thinking about. And, and that's why, you know, in, in a normal uh, midterm environment, you know, we'd be prepared to get mm -hmm. shellacked. But this is the most fluid environment I've ever seen. And it's fluid because we have put points on the board. We have uh, been fighting on the right side of issues for people. And we've got to make sure that voters understand that as they head to the polls. But the singular issue that you hear in poll after poll after poll that matters to Americans most is inflation. And it is still out of control. And that's why, or part of the reason why this NBC poll found that Americans trust Republicans on the economy 20% more than Democrats. So will that message from President Biden sell? Well, we're going to continue to make sure that people know the facts. I mean, the, the Republican response to today's challenges is let's cut Medicare and let's cut Social Security. Those aren't my words. Those are things that Republicans like Ron Johnson have proposed. Uh, I don't think that's going to help people in any way, shape or form. And so, you know, this we're now at the st stage of this campaign. It's about turnout. Uh, I mean, we have election after election. We could go over Wisconsin, Georgia, Pennsylvania, et cetera. We've got all these elections that are razor thin. And I think in the end of the day, um, we are going to surprise so many people because we saw in those five special elections post Dobbs, uh, Democrats doing well, and not just in blue areas, but in places like Kansas. And so this is a turnout election, and that's what Democrats are doing, and they're doing it well. You see the early vote numbers in a number of states are, frankly, eye-popping. I think Georgia is going to exceed their 2020 early vote numbers. And so uh, it's going to be razor thin. Uh, we're, we're swimming upstream against historic tides in midterm elections, but notwithstanding that, uh, we're very much in the ballgame because we have put points on the board and, and the president deserves a lot of credit for what he has done. We'll see the outcome in just 12 days from today. Secretary Perez, always great to have you. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Have a wonderful day.